uh, if we look at back and see what happened in, 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 in PC and PC uh, uh, industry, we started like 25, I mean looking back just 25 years, we see we started the beginning of that decade with, uh, with PC and uh, applications were distributed as binaries on CDs. Then uh, came the web browser. It really changed the way applications uh, are programmed uh, in a fundamental way. It changed the way applications are distributed in a fundamental way. It delivered the notion of writing once and running in any browser on any operating system, on any platform. Just imagine without web, without the very powerful concept of URL, weaving this over billion, couple billions of pages together, what would we have if we didn't have the web open platform? What would we have instead of the magnificent search engine that is a fundamental part of our lives today without the open web platform? Now, we believe the same cycle is happening on the, uh, on the mobile side. Apps are coming from these walled garden uh, platforms. They run only on the platform they were designed for. And HTML5, we think it is the web reaction to this walled garden platform. If you look at all these new capabilities that are being introduced by HTML5, they are filling the gap of mobile and web. So, um, and they are taking. HTML5 is taking us closer and closer to the notion of writing once, running anywhere, on, on any device. Here are quotes from the top three forces in software industry, Apple, Mac, Google, Microsoft, and essentially all of them are saying that HTML5 is the future uh, of uh, computing. And uh, the quote from Eric Schmidt reads like, when he thinks about it, it, it seems like HTML5 is the way eventually all applications will be written even those on smartphones. This is quite striking from the executive chairman of the company that owns the Android platform. He too thinks long-term HTML5 is the future of computing. And now with the Internet of Things, all these smart things connected to the web, extending the web, the HTML5 technologies are even more attractive and become even more important. So now I will talk about uh, the gaps that are there in HTML5 platform. You have heard that, oh, it's not there, HTML5 was the biggest mistake, or too much reliance on HTML5 was the biggest mistake we did, etc. There are gaps, but they are closing. And Intel has been helping to close those gaps. These are uh, one of the main reasons, or one of the main uh, causes of HTML5 to be viable is the tremendous speed up in JavaScript that happened over the past uh, basically um, seven, eight years. Uh, now if you look back, JavaScript has improved by a couple hundred times over the past just few years. And to a large extent, it is because of arrival of justice and compilation technology in JavaScript. It, now, if before it was like 300 times slower than Optima C++, with JITs we got to 10x, 5x comparison, like slower, but with some Amazing technology from uh, from Mozilla, AsmJS, which is a subset of JavaScript, which is, can can be programmed very efficiently, that, it, that can be compiled very efficiently. That gap comes to almost 1.5x. These are the results uh, from, uh, from uh, our friends at Mozilla, Luke Wagner and Alan Zakai, at the beginning of this year. And knowing them, I think things might have even further improved by since the beginning of the year till, till now. So, using that technology, in addition, uh, in co combination with another technology called Mscripten, which is a compiler from LLVM backend to JavaScript, uh, Mozilla and partners have brought really large game engines to the web platform, like Epic and Real Engine 3, 4, Unity Engine, over 1 million line of C++ code, automatically compile to JavaScript and run in the browser in open, in open fashion. So, nonetheless, there's some gaps. Like architects have turned to parallelism for, uh, for both performance and power, essentially to deliver high performance with a constrained power budget. And at all these different levels, the two dimensions of, an important dimension of parallelism is number of cores, where we have 
inc increase the number of cores over the generations, like starting from single core to dual core and, and, and so on. Also, with single instruction, multiple data, vector instruction. The instruction that can operate on multiple data with, uh, at the same time. And with wider ve vector instructions, you see the roadmap on the, on the right side. However, if you look at the web uh, browser architecture, then you see there is a mismatch. That is, the current browser runtime do not take full advantage of the power, of, of this compute power that uh, modern processors have. On the left, you see the architecture, essentially the flow of a runtime, and parses program, builds document object model, and then, uh, and then layout engine basically decides where things go, and then the rendering engine displays that. And using JavaScript, you interact with, with the DOM, and you modify things, and reflow happens, etc. Uh, but if you look at it, uh, the, the, the cycle spent on these components, that the, the, the data on the right side was uh, from a, um, just a while back, one of the most popular uh, mobile browsers that would be conducted this study, you see only basically the rendering part is, is, is parallel and is taking an advanced GPU. The rest was not really uh, uh, parallelized in the sense of uh, you know, completely balanced. Maybe threads, but they are not doing that, that much work. And that is not good. This is a problem. We have to solve that. This is an area we have been very interested from the very beginning from like seven, eight years ago. In fact, during that, uh, uh, yeah, the first uh, design of the first JavaScript JSON com compiler in the Firefox browser, we did background JSON time compilation, where compilation happened in parallel, and can do parallel compilation. We did the first implementation of that for JavaScript. And today that model is mainstream, in you know, IE, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, and uh, also, we, we did parallelize the CSS rule matching of browser, showing really good speed up on uh, that that's possible. Now, kudos to Mozilla for starting several projects and attacking at this really challenging problem of designing the web engine for modern, modern uh, hardware. We really look forward to that. At Intel, our, our colleagues at Intel Labs developed a concept of parallel array, river trail, and now together with Mozilla, they are working on parallel JavaScript where basically you can apply a function in parallel to multiple data. Uh, that is uh, ongoing and the target is ECMAScript 7. Now, I will talk about SIMD, single instruction multiple data. This is something that last year I promised, I told people that we are working with uh, Mozilla and Google, and today it, we, we, we basically have it. With vector instruction, as opposed to scalar instruction where you operate on two like, registers, you operate on multiple or vector registers that have multiple data in them. And in, for example, with one addition, you can compute like four additions, or eight additions, or even six in addition on the latest of Intel processors, uh, uh, depending on the, the width of the, of the vector. Thus, you can get like speed up of 4x, 8x, and, and, and so on. So uh, when we introduce uh, as a Cindy instruction in Intel uh, processors, we worked with Microsoft and also introduced these vector types. Like on the left side, you see a variable of f32 by 4, which means we have a vector of load 32 of uh, length 4. And then in the loop, when you say like that variable plus another one, at every iteration, instead of one addition, actually four additions. Is performed. That is, you can shrink the trip count of the loop by a factor of four or the factor of the vector length. And uh, compiler, C++ compiler, generate really good code for that. And that is what has been used in industry, enabling a large class of native applications. But that was not possible in JavaScript. So we talked to who better than creator of JavaScript, Brandon Ike at Mozilla and say, OK, now MScript can compile C++ to JavaScript, but what if the original program has seen the intrinsics? There is no way to express that. And we had talked to uh, them about that before, but this time said, OK, now uh, let's do something serious about that. And we, we prototyped something. My colleague, uh, Peter Jensen, prototyped something, prototyped something using tag arrays which showed really good speed up. And then at the same time, John McCutcheon, from Google was doing the same thing for the language Dart, which Google is pushing. 
and uh, uh, so he had designed an API. Then Brandon invited him to the collaboration, and uh, John joined us, and we looked at his API, and we thought it's very good. It needed some you know, enhancement or changes for JavaScript because of certain things that are different in JavaScript, and are, uh, for example, operator overloading, things like that. But uh, today, now we have it, essentially. And we have it implemented in Chromium browser, which is the open source version of Chrome. We have implemented that in Firefox browser also. So now, I show you some demos using uh, these, uh, these new capabilities. This is uh, on the early version of Firefox where uh, we, uh, we had uh, implemented the Cindy capability. Now, uh, now I will run one of the common uh, uh, the, uh, applications, the Mandelbrot set, which is used for showing uh, a vector, the benefits of vector extraction. This is what is used on native world, so we use it for uh, uh, JavaScript as well. Now, the, the, the nature of Mandelbrot is that, it, depending on the color, the computation changes. So, for certain color, it, it needs more computation. Now, when I start this without CMD, you see frame per second of 17, and if I let it go down, uh, when it gets to these dark areas, it's going to get to like nine or so. This is without CMD. And now, if I use CMD, suddenly you will go to like 3x, 4x faster. So if you, if I don't use it, it will drop. If I use it, it will go back to 34. So this is um, CMD in the early version of uh, Firefox. We uh, have done that for Chromium browser, um, multiple versions of Chromium over, over this past year. The same uh, demo I run here, you see basically the same uh, frame per second using uh, uh, JavaScript. Simply, you get a factor, speed up of like factor three. Now, if you come and profile this application while it's running, Modern browsers have all these really great capabilities in them that you can profile, debug, and all that in the browser. So now we are profiling the application as it's running, and I can stop it, and stop this, and then you see that here, about 60, 70% of the time is in this function. And this is the function that has been vectorized. And this is JavaScript. We did not change JavaScript language. We just introduced a particular JavaScript object, Simly, that has these nice properties that can be efficiently mapped to a Simly instruction. This is uh, what, uh, I mean, the API is what John uh, had designed uh, for Dart. And the spirit is very, very similar uh, in, in JavaScript. Now here, you see, we are uh, replicating like value four into four elements of uh, this variable to four elements. Here we are multiplying. Again, this is for those of you who know JavaScript. It's still uh, JavaScript and type, but uh, the properties are by definition so that they can be actually typed and, and implemented efficiently. Here your multiplication. Uh, vector multiplication, here we are doing parallel compare, and so on. And as you saw, that 70% speed up by Amdahl's law, we cannot get on average more than like 4x, 3x three, three speed up. But on certain colors uh, where computation is uh, more, then uh, you basically can get more speed up. Now, there is another feature in HTML5, it is web worker, which is basically background processing. And now, the nice thing about this model that we have is that it, it, they are orthogonal, they are complementary. Now, I run the same thing with one web worker without CMD, you see that frame per second comes down to about 9, 10, and then if I turn CMD on, you are going to 30. One web worker, if I add two, you are going to get even better. And this is a, a dual for hyper threaded uh, uh, machine. So eventually it's not going to scale any further, but you know, with four of them, you're getting like seven. So this is um, what uh, we did uh, in, in, in Chromium. Now, uh, this demo was done by my colleague Peter Jensen. He has another one. You know, he, he generates all these birds as long as he can maintain frame per second of about 30. 
So the metric becomes how many bears can you create. And without Cindy, you basically uh, would get probably around 100, and the frame per second is, uh, is 30. Now, if I turn Cindy on, now these are Cindy birds that are being born, <laughs> and you basically see we can afford having a lot more birds because we, we can compute a lot more. And the same thing here, if you profile that, you see it's in, in the vectorized code. So, um, applications like games are uh, main target of uh, benefiting from, from, uh, from such capabilities. So, Mandelbrot, these are the benchmarks that uh, we, we developed uh, during the course of the project this past year. And you see that uh, actually the speed up, the theoretical speed up is, uh, is poor, and you're getting actually very good speed up. Mandelbrot is one of the low lower performing uh, benchmark. Not, not because our implementation is not good, because not all the code is vectorized. It's like where you get, uh, you get simply, you get the performance. And that is exactly what the, the game developers and application developers want. It is when you write it, you want a guaranteed speed up. And the way this model is and the way the implementations are, we, I mean, we, our goal is to deliver that and we, we believe we can, we can deliver that. So the spec, original spec was by John and, uh, and, and later Peter Jensen uh, joined. And uh, we have uh, the polyfill API that can be used, and uh, constructors for the objects, and a lot of operations that are uh, already implemented. Now, the proposal for CIMD in JavaScript was presented to the TC39 committee, which is the official JavaScript committee, ECMAScript committee, in this past July by uh, John and, uh, and Peter from our side. And it was unanimously approved to advance to the next stage of standardization. We are very, very pleased with this outcome. Now, essentially, it means everybody wants to have this in the next version of JavaScript. And we, uh, we are working on, on the next stage of JavaScript, of standardization of that. So uh, another area we have been working on is mscripten. mscripten is this compiler, essentially, from C++ to JavaScript, replacing the native calls to the equivalent HTML5 calls. And on the left side, you, will, you see a C++ this is a, a C code with SIMD intrinsic. So this is native SIMD intrinsic in a C code. And then mscript compiles that to JavaScript. It targets SIMD, and you get uh, that code. Uh, and then the speed ups are really good. So it's like essentially the speed ups you're getting is neck to neck with uh, with native, and uh, the goal is to complete Emscript and Cindy path. Uh, great work of uh, Alan Zakai and, and team at Mozilla, and, uh, and so that you can actually port really large application, including Cindy intrinsic to JavaScript. And the Cindy capability in JavaScript is independent of Emscript, and also so that it can be programmed directly. So we think it can be programmed in libraries. Uh, things like games, image processing, perceptual and, and so on. So um, at this point, I would like to invite uh, John McCutcheon and uh, Dan Roman. Uh, uh, so thank you very much. Is this your first time to idea? This is. Hopefully it won't be the last. <laughs> so uh, uh, John, uh, would you want to share your thoughts on on where Cindy capability in JavaScript, what, what application domain can benefit from this new capability? Yeah, uh, this is very exciting work. Um, I actually haven't seen these numbers for Inscript, and, and this just touches upon like a, a huge area. I mean, you already talked about Unreal Engine and Unity. There's so much existing C and C++ code out there that targets the kind of standard C++ Cindy intrinsics. And as we can see, it just translates directly over using the script and compiler. So all of this legacy code that's written in C and C++ is just going to carry over into JavaScript and show the same kind of speed ups. In a portable... Yes. Yes. Like, like, so we, we are leveraging all this investment in native code over the past so many years, the Cindy code. And then yeah, making it possible, so bringing it... Scripting allowed us to 
bring over so much legacy code, but what was missing in the initial proposal was access to SIMD instruction sets. And so my background is in the games industry, and I used to spend, I spent a couple years porting Bullet, the Bullet Physics Engine to the cell processor, which was basically a big exercise in making the Bullet Physics Engine use SIMD instructions. And so, so much inside of a game engine, uh, so much of the computation and CPU time is spent in these hot functions, which are often uh, parallelizable using SIMD instruction sets. So I think games are going to be a huge uh, win in SIMD. Image processing. Oh, image processing, um, any kind of numerical computation. And one thing that is often, so there's certain class of algorithms that you know can be targeted directly at SIMD and you kind of reprocessing one set of input data, but you can also just start to compute more than one simulation of something at the same time when your algorithm and your data structures don't naturally line up with what SIMD requires. So, uh, folks, browser is about to get a lot faster for these domains, so just be ready. Dan, what's up? All right, so I'm here to say that we have an implementation of all this stuff in Firefox Nightly, so this is something you can download and try out right now. Right? Oh, if I'm gonna, if Mo's gonna let me install some software, I'll talk to her. Are you confident it will work? <laughs> so what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm actually gonna download. This is this is a Firefox I'm opening. It's just a brand new release version of Firefox. I'm gonna go and look for the nightly release where we have our support. And I'm spell nightly wrong. So this is the latest build of. So Firefox. this is the very latest build of Firefox built last night, literally. Mm -hmm. um, I'm download it right here on the spot. Is uh, the Simbi support under a particular flag or is it on by default? So the Simbi support right now is limited to the SMJS mode. This is the mode that JavaScript uses in C++. It's our subset of JavaScript that's specifically designed to be really easy to optimize. Um, we're working on adding full support as well. But right now what I'm going to show you is the SMJS. So do the users need to set any flag when they want to do Users do not need to set any flag. It just all works automatically. In fact, you'll see as I do this, install the so no. browser. You'll see that I don't actually have to set any flags. I can just go to the URL and everything works out of the box. So I have a question. Um, when will this be in a released version of Firefox? Like what's the timeline on the nightly build being incorporated into it? So that's actually dependent on the standardization process. We don't actually want to ship something until we're pretty confident that the API is standardized and like, stabilized at least. Um, and right now, there's some questions about the Cindy API. When it goes through the standardization process, some changes might happen. Yes. I expect that actually the core of the API is actually looks pretty good and, and probably just go forward as it is. But um, it's possible some things will change. And we don't want to get in a situation where we're, we release one version and then have to change how things work and break people's code. So that's yeah. going to be gated on that feature. but. Um, other than that, we're looking at like the ASMJS level at least being available um, as soon as the API standard within a matter of months. Great. All right, then. Here you are. All right, so we, we just are that one at that book. So, yeah. yeah. so let's click on the bookmark here, which is. This is available, folks. This is available. So you, you can go and do the same exercise. Yep. So I'm going to click on the same menu button on that. Uh, and we'll just show you all. And there are more demos now. So this is running without Cindy, and it's running without the VS mode. It's running pretty slow as well. You can see that. Turn on Cindy. Increase number of web workers. We can also it's already web workers. Oh, and we can just this is go. this is remarkable. Hey, great job. So like I said, this is Firefox Nightly. You can go and download it right now uh, for our website. Um, you can go to the IDF link that we have and see our Cindy demos. Try it yourself. Thank you so much. Thanks also a lot to your team. A lot of people behind the scenes have been in great work to get that. Hey, thanks, John. Oh, thank you. I mean, this really has been a quite uh, 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 incredible partnership. They just fun, very productive. In just about a year, we have brought this major uh, capability in two different browsers, two different runtimes, to give you an idea. Like on the Chromium part, there was about 15 to 20,000 line of code change that we did at, at Intel. And now with the uh, help of uh, friends at Mozilla, 
parts have been landed, major parts of them. As in JS Park already works without uh, any flag, etc. Now that there are some Ion Monkey uh, part, which is a little, if I want to describe the details, uh, it's just too much, but uh, that is in the works and it's going to happen. And we really look forward to seeing that very soon in, in the Chrome browser, in other browsers. We welcome people from uh, other browser vendors to the collaboration, application developers. We really like to hear from application developers who uh, give us feedback uh, to make sure that the API is complete covering their application and also our implementations are good and meets their, their requirement. So if you have applications, if, uh, please uh, uh, let us know. We have open bi-weekly meetings and we'll be welcome new, uh, new partners in the project. Thank you very much. Sir. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So now, the way we work, we work with the major uh, technology uh, houses like Google, Mozilla, and other vendors directly helping them to get this in, in, uh, in the code. But we also have uh, a runtime called Crosswalk, which is based on Blink and Chromium WebKit. Uh, but the, the, the late, late, very latest technology there, it quickly gets packaged every six weeks and it, it becomes available to, uh, to the users. Now, on older version of Android, there is a problem that the web view, uh, that is the web engine, which is on the device, is inferior to what is today in the Chrome browser. Now, uh, because of backward compatibility issues, it still is there. And with Crosswalk, the model is that you package the runtime inside your application. So you have this packaged application that really the web object doesn't interact with the web object outside. So it can coexist even with the older version, which is inferior and doesn't have certain features like WebGL, which is, which is a major feature in HTML5, as well as JavaScript execution, etc. So Crosswalk is uh, has a lot of nice features. I don't have time to go over that. It is open source project using Chrome, using uh, Chromium and uh, Blink WebKit technology, but with additional features also. Some of them are like Intel specific capabilities. Now, while waiting, for example, for Chrome to completely land uh, the SIMD patch, with Crosswalk, we have made it available. Now, people can develop application now using I Intel XDK cross-platform development kit you can develop a HTML5 application for all app stores, for all uh, uh, platforms, uh, iOS, Android, Windows, web. And on Android, you have also this option of embedding your, uh, your uh, runtime, the crosswalk runtime, inside your application. And Cindy is already on, uh, on that. And uh, if I had time, I would just show you on a uh, Intel tablet that the same thing works. So we, we have Cindy running on uh, tablets already. And again, as I mentioned before, we welcome uh, participation by the ARM community to come and catch up and complete the backend for, for ARM also. We want Cindy to be ubiquitous so that developers can confidently develop application using that and not have to worry about whether the speed up is going to be there or not. It will work even, the, even if the platform doesn't have it the way we are doing it. It will work but it may not be speed up because the hardware doesn't have that capability. But it would be really good if, if it is there. So now I'll talk about uh, another gap that we have been working on eliminating, and that is uh, depth camera for WebRTC. Computer interaction is quickly uh, evolving from mouse keyboard to touch to more intuitive way of interaction through speech recognition, like object tracking, hand rec tracking, facial tracking, face recognition, the whole computer vision, or what Intel calls perceptual computing. Essentially, the device senses and, and perceives your intention and with, with, in a very natural way. And there are very, uh, very interesting and helpful uh, uh, use cases. Like in education, uh, you can have Kids interact with uh, naturally with like books. You can have uh, immersive uh, collaboration from different places uh, together. You 
gaming would be highly enhanced by perceptual computing, and so on. You can do even scanning, like with, uh, 3D scanning. You get your object here, and it scans that, and then you can share it. You can print it 3D and customize it and print it, and you just get all that. But I think one area which we would potentially be highly affected is online shopping. Like you go, want to buy your clothes, you go online, it sees you, and then you put on something just virtually, and it just does it, and you see how you look, and it may even suggest things to you, and, and so on. So for HTML5, the, uh, the API that provides that capability is called WebRTC. It is available in several browsers. Now here, basically, a simple one. Uh, if I start that, uh, it says, do I want to share my camera? And I say yes, and you see me here. I can take a snapshot, and you see I can change the filter, I can apply that. You can even make phone calls, uh, and uh, Ninjin Hu has, uh, has uh, brought that here. And the goal here is to cut fruits uh, without, cutting, without touching a bomb that gets dropped. You see, like if I move around, I don't cut the fruit, but if I move my hand, it should, I think if the light cooperates, for some reason. Uh, for some reason, this doesn't work. Let me restart it. Ah, the reason is because I have not connected my 3D camera. You need a uh, real sense camera to be integrated. Right now I'm using this creative camera when I have not connected that, so. <coughs> All right, so that things went much better. Now you'll, you'll see me, see now, it's not going to cut that, but if I move my hand, you basically can see it can. Eventually, there's a bomb and game over, and so on. So this is now with depth camera. In addition to color per pixel, you have the depth information, and you can basically filter out things that are far and focus on the things that are close. Therefore, you don't need as much computation as processing the whole thing. That is one application. You can, of course, do much better resolution processing, and so on. Also, so now. Um, now, we are extending WebRTC with depth camera. And I show you now the same uh, demos. Now, completely using, uh, uh, using uh, uh, HTML5 and this, uh, this extension. So this is uh, the Fruit Ninja using XR extension. Uh, Intel is leading that extension of WebRTC for 3D camera. And now you see me here, it would ask, all right, see now I'm not cutting it. This is again browser, I'm running it completely in browser, no native code, no nothing. And then here, I, it, it, it recognizes my hand and it just does all this. Thing. And if I touch the So um, you saw that now, you, you can basically, what, uh, what, what is uh, happening is that with this camera, you have two streams. One is the RGB stream and one is the depth stream. Now here you see me, real-time rendering of me talking, and I can have control here, I can enable RGB, and now it asks me again for, for uh, Thing, and then you basically see me here, right? All process using JavaScript extended web RC with the information. Now, if we go back, we re implemented the xylophone now using the camera. Now, here, we wait every time it asks because of privacy. Now, see now here, uh -huh, and nothing happened because, but you see, now it recognizes my hand. And you see in that square, it says hand, it's recognized. Okay. You know, without, these are the experiences that uh, depth camera 
uh, enables. And it is today missing from web, but Intel is leading it. In addition to having it in perceptual computing SDK, which with a large amount of uh, number of APIs for uh, perceptual computing processing, speech processing, and image recognition, etc., we are also adding that so that in open web you can use it. And, uh, and with integrated uh, depth camera real sense on devices, you saw my have there are announced that's coming in November, and others will come. I think uh, it will be a lot more fun as we go to new things. And we want the web platform to be complete, not have any gap shortcoming here. Again, that work is under W3C, it's going really well. And then the code is here, and we are just adding that depth stream through exactly the same model, JavaScript. Now, WebRTC itself does not define, it is a peer-to-peer -peer connection API. That is, you don't even need a server uh, when, when you're communicating. It's very powerful. But the initial handshake server and service solutions, as well as the client solution that enables that. It does the initial handshake, the signaling protocol, which is not defined initially. And also we enable transcoding while the debate for the codec, whether it should be H.264 or VP8, is ongoing using uh, latest servers of Intel, we can do transcoding and, and basically convert them on the fly during that, that communication. And also uh, we enable multi-way communication as opposed to one-to-one -to -one, uh, uh, one -one communication. And the, the, if you are interested, webrtc.intel.com, you can go there and get that. There is also a poster session, you can get more information. Another area, which is there's a gap, is this wireless display. You saw that this morning. For several use cases, you want that. You may want, uh, you want to have a presentation, you have a presentation or, or on your tablet, and you go to a place on a larger screen, you have a lot of details, so you want the ability to, to do that. Today, in the web, there's no way to do that. You may have uh, uh, a, a movie that uh, you want to share and, and display. It's, uh, if you can click the volume, that will be fine. Or you, you, you may want to do gaming using your tablet. If you want to enhance your gaming experience, use it as a controller on larger, uh, larger display. Now, there are all these technologies uh, like Apple, uh, AirPlay, Microsoft Play 2, Google Chromecast, Miracast, Intel Wider, but they are not essentially, there's no web API for doing that. Intel is leading an API, presentation API, uh, so that the application itself has a way of doing it. And uh, you, it basically abstracts the details of this technology and using an API using those technologies, but the user doesn't have to worry about how it is done. It is available to the HTML, eventually it will become available to the HTML uh, application that you, you go somewhere and you display your application there. Now, you've seen uh, the expected explosive growth of IoT devices. Now, they become extension of the web and they need to be programmed. Now, we are adding support for that is in Intel XDK, Intel Cross Development Kit. Most of the time, with an IoT device, there is a companion application, which is a mobile application, or is a web application. And obviously, you can program that uh, mobile or web using HTML5 technology, using XDK. But in addition, Node.js is becoming an important building block of these IoT devices. That is, essentially the device becomes like a server that it can generate data for you. And then you can access it, it gives you data. Essentially, it becomes part of the web. Now, if you, have, you want to develop a particular application, you can develop a JavaScript application using Node.js and have it there deployed that. Now, in XDK, Intel cross-platform development kit, we have feature for editing, sending the application to the IoT device, and even it has smart for uh, uh, node uh, package manager. If you just describe 
uh, what you need. It figures out the dependency and gets those uh, libraries and sends only those to the IoT device. You can wirelessly debug the application on the IoT device, all using XDK. Essentially, you can program both the companion program application as well as the application using XDK, end to end, using JavaScript. So JavaScript is is proliferating very fast into these IoT devices. Also, really interesting guys. Now I will uh, show you a demo that my colleague uh, Dan Yokum uh, from XDK team created. So he basically creates a, an RGB lamp using a piece of wood, a PVC pipe, an RGB LED, and uh, an Intel Galileo. And he programs that using uh, XDK. And you will basically see all the steps that he does and how easy it is to do so. So um, I play that. That is a ping pong ball. The first part is to program the IoT device. So it wirelessly senses the, the device. You the, first you connect to that. So you have XDK on your laptop and it communicates to the IoT device wirelessly. You write the program and you want to upload that. As I said, it has even smart or uh, no packet manager. Now, so there is, you run your app on the IoT device, but under the control of XDK. And say you find a bug, you want to debug it, then the IoT toolbar is going to give you that capability. This, by the way, we expect by end of September it will be announced. It will become released in XDK. And XDK is free. You can get it for HTML Now And you see now, debugging, breakpoint, everything on the IoT device, but from your laptop using Intel Intel XDK. And now you have to develop uh, the control application, the companion, which basically he uses a phone with a color palette to control the lamp. Now you just touch the phone and say, okay, I want this color. The light bulb becomes that color. You, you can change it and, and so on. In fact, you can write uh, your application to do loops and, all, and so on. And eventually you basically get this. And here is the actual um, demo. Uh, so you see the Galileo board, 